All right, I'm going to try to do all this in one take, so if I miss something or doesn't flow or I bounce around, around a little bit, I apologize. If I do miss some information, I'll try to put it in the comments on uh, YouTube and or the Flying Bear Facebook group. I'll put a link to each and both. So I'm going to go over some of the issues I've had with the Flying Bear. You may or may not have these issues, so the results may vary. And how I aligned the Z-axis, got that working good, and how you generally tram the whole machine in. So the first thing I'll start with is this rear frame. We're looking at the back of the machine and you need to get this rear frame, these four pieces of extrusion um, square. I've seen a lot of people on the Facebook group complain about not being able to get the whole machine square. It really doesn't matter as long as you get these four pieces square to each other. And if you have a really hard time getting these four square, you really only need to have three, the top and bottom and one of the sides. So <clears throat> to do this right, You'll need some sort of square, and I recommend you get one of these 12 inch machinist square ruler things. They're pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. You don't need to stare it. About 15 or 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. If you're in Canada, that'd be Princess Auto. If you're somewhere else, you're on your own there, but they have them on eBay and Amazon. Use the uh, square in each corner. Try to get them as good as you can. I pretty much got mine all perfect. You only need the two top and bottom, two sides, and you get four and eight of each. So mix and match the different extrusions to try to get this rear frame as square as possible. That is the baseline for the machine. So start with that, it's the most important. So when I give it a square rear frame, the way I mount the Z's and the Z axis to make that work is <clears throat> I'll first mount the rail with the blocks and the plates by itself. Leave the motor and the lead screw and the nut off for now and obviously the bed because you can bolt that on later. And I start by mounting one of the rails and if you can only get three of these bars square make sure you mount the rail that's next to that side that you got square and I call that the king rail. So let's say I got this perfectly 90 and this perfectly 90 but I couldn't get these two. We'll go ahead and mount this one first. They have you mount this block 92 millimeters away from the side of the extrusion here, so go ahead and do that. It doesn't have to be perfect because you set that offset in your firmware settings, which you can tune later, but get it as close to 92 as you can, and then tighten that block down. And what you're gonna do is measure with calipers from the extrusion to the rail itself and try to reproduce it exactly up here when you bolt this block in. And what you're doing is making sure that your king rail is perfectly parallel with the extrusion that you got square. So once you have your king rail in place, you can then align the other rail parallel to that. One of the problems I had was with the mounting blocks on these, they're not machined perfectly. So, <coughs> excuse me, the hole in them isn't straight through. It was actually tilted back a little bit. So when I mount the rail in it, I tighten the block down. The top of the rail was actually tilting forward or backwards, depending on whether this was flipped forward or backwards and not lining up with the groove right here that it should line up with pretty well. So if it's hanging out here and I have to pull it back into the groove, what it was doing was flexing this extrusion. So it's taking the whole extrusion and twisting it. This whole flat surface on top is twisting and when your motor mounts to it, that then takes your motor and tilts it back or forward and will cause all kinds of issues with your lead screw. You can't have that. So I ended up being able to mix in mix them and match them in certain locations to get them to work and that's why I have them numbered one through four. <clears throat> I noticed one side of these, the top on this one for example, is not as flat as the bottom one and they all had that similarity where one side was flatter than the other. So if you have a good straight edge like you should have with your machine to square, lay them on top there and see which side's flatter and mount that side to the extrusion. <clears throat> so once you have your rails vertical and not fighting the extrusion and this one perfectly parallel. And then I mount this second one <coughs> and you'll set this bottom distance by using the bed plate with its bearings. So you'll just run it down to the bottom where it is now and that'll put this block kind of where it wants to be. Another issue I had was the bed plate was bent. So I was taking this bearing and tilting it in and it was very evident when you run the plate up and down and this is why we like to put the lead screw on so that you can manually traverse it, the top of the rail would lean in like this a good half inch. It was very obvious. So if your bed is bent, you'll see that when you tram it up and down. 
So leave this one loose. You can start those nuts, but don't tighten them. Leave the top one loose after you've done your king rail and run the Z up and down. Make sure it's not bent and you don't have a, a second rail moving around. If it is bent, straighten it out the best you can. If you measure between the two bearing cases, they should be the exact same measurement. Like I said, mine was tilted in, so the top measurement was smaller than the bottom measurement. So you'll know when you get those equal, it should be straight. These bearings aren't the greatest. Obviously they have some tolerance issues, so you still might have a little bit of bar moving around when you have these two distances equal and just get it the best you can. You'll have to, it took me quite a while to tweak it and play with it and get it all right. But once you have a straight bed mounting plate, you've got your bottom distance, distance set. You can go ahead and run the Z axis to the top and that'll bring this in where it kind of wants to be and you can tighten that down. And then I double checked by measuring from here to here and making sure it was the same at the top. And that ensures that both rails are parallel to each other and then both rails are parallel to your extrusion. And if the whole frame is square, then they'll both automatically be parallel to this extrusion. And you can check that as well if you'd like. <coughs> as far as the weed screw goes, you need to make sure it's not bent. If it has any sort of bend in it, it'll cause you issues that you really won't be able to work out depending on the severity of the bend. If you have V-blocks like I do, you can put them on V-blocks and check it with an indicator. If not, use a, if you have a nice glass table or coffee table that's reasonably flat, you can roll it across that and see if it has a bend. These aren't very successful if you try to straighten it out yourself or straighten them at all because it's a threaded rod. You should probably just get a new one if you have a bent lead screw. And you'll never get everything right if that's bent, so make sure that's not bent. <coughs> you may notice I flipped the lead nut up. So with a lead nut like this, I get about 295Z. I don't know if that's how they wanted you to install it originally, but we'll put it that way with the nuts on top and get a little more Z out of it if you want to do that. Another thing is myself, and I've seen a lot of Facebook posts, had an issue with squeaking lead screw. It's a brass nut, so it's probably going to do that. I used uh, light oil and machinist oil, and it didn't ever stop squeaking until I greased it. So if you put some automotive type grease, I don't think it'll come out there, but just some bearing grease or wheel grease, lithium grease, really anything should work because it's a slow RPM lead screw. Quiets it right down. <clears throat> so once you have your two rails, rails parallel and installed, you can go ahead and tighten the box down, make sure those are snug. You can go ahead and install the motor, install the lead nut, and then thread your screw into it, put your coupler on. The way that I centered the motor is to first bring the Z axis down to where it is, and the nut will kind of force the motor where it wants to be. Let everything relax, and it'll kind of rough it in to where it should be on the rail. So at that point, you can go ahead and lightly snug up the screws. And then if you go up to the top of the lead screw, as you move the motor around, you'll see it, it'll pivot on the nut as a fulcrum and the, the screw will move around depending on how you move the motor. So you want it to be perfectly centered between both rails. So it's perfectly parallel in this axis you also want it perfectly centered between the rails in this axis. I don't know if you can see that. So because of the leverage ratio here, any sort of error down here will amplify itself and you can see it really easily in the lead screw. So take your calipers or uh, even a ruler or work for this and make sure that this distance is exactly the same as this distance. And you adjust that by moving the motor back and forth and that it's perfectly centered between the rails. So if you lay a straight edge across the rails, and mine's not perfect, but it's close. It's an 8mm lead screw across 10mm rails. Should have, you should have a 1mm gap on each side there. And then when you put the ruler on the back side, you should have the same thing. 1mm gap. That will center the motor on the extrusion. And with the nut itself, as perfectly as you can probably get it. So once you do that, you know your lead screw is parallel and two axes with the Z rail. <clears throat> You'll notice I have a custom coupler that made another one right here. Another issue I had, focus, 
this is just a straight through solid coupler. Another issue I had was the coupler that came with it was not concentric. The 5mm hole on the stepper side was not in the same axis as the 8mm side. So that was introducing some wobble into the screw and it would show up in the prints if I didn't have the motor kind of move to account for it, which then caused the screw to lean and not be symmetric within the, the rails or parallel rather. So this is kind of a temporary fix because you don't really want a solid coupler, but I'm eventually going to modify this lead screw to be captured by bearings like a classic CNC machine so that the bearings center the shaft and locate it and then I'll, I'll put a coupler back on that won't introduce any error into the screw because the bearings will be holding it. But for now, we're on a solid coupler and the idea is you risk, run the risk of breaking the motor shaft because any error in the screw gets translated to the shaft and the shaft wants to bend, but it's low RPM, low use, so it'll, it'll work for now. But check your um, coupler. It'll be pretty obvious that around because you'll see the lead screw kind of spin in a different circle than the motor is. And try a new China one, but they're they're usually not of greatest quality, so you might want to just spend the 15, 20 bucks on a good uh, Ruland, I think is the brand, or you can go on eBay or various places and find good couplers. <clears throat> so what's next? Oh, just a quick tip, you'll see I colored, maybe you'll see, the top of the lead screw with a blue marker. So once you cinch a set screw down on the, on the lead screw, it'll kind of snarl it up, and you don't want to run your bearing through that, or I'm sorry, your nut. So I put that mark on there to make sure I always start my nut on this side, because that nut is the accuracy of your z-axis. So don't try not to wear it, mark it up, or screw it up too bad. So I think that about takes care of the z-axis. If you have any issues after you've done all that with the z-axis bearings sticking, because I did, they would get hung up right about here and would actually hold the bed up, then you probably need new bearings. I went ahead and bought, I found some used Nippon Denso bearings on eBay. These are $50 a piece new, or $55, so it's over $100 for a pair. And when we're talking about a $300 machine, it's kind of hard to justify, but I found them used for a pair. $25 repair on eBay, and I'll throw these in when I feel up to it, but these glide beautifully on their shaft. They're not notchy and weird like these Chinese ones are. I also noticed after the ones I originally had sticking did loosen up, they lost a lot of tolerance, so this one can actually shake back and forth on its rail a few thousands. It doesn't seem to show up in the print. The bed doesn't seem to want to move at all, so it's not too much of an issue, but I found a deal, so I'm replacing them anyway. <clears throat> What'll happen if they do stick while you're printing? And a real quick note, if you're just running it through really quickly, you'll never notice it because the bed steps down so slowly. Something that you would run through by hand and not even feel will actually catch the bed while it's printing. And what happens is because this, let's see if I can get the focus, this lead nut has what's called backlash. I don't know if you can see this, but this thread's not perfect. So the bed will actually move up and down a little bit which is fine while you're printing because gravity holds it down. But what happens if it gets stuck is it'll stay there until the backlash is taken up, which can be easily two or three layers. And then the lead screw will grab it and pull it down. And then the bed goes down all two or three layers. So you end up with way over extruded layers when it happened and then a big gap and then all kinds of weird issues. And it shows up immediately in your print and pretty much ruins it. So make sure your, your bearings do not stick even the slightest. These like a good lightweight oil too. I just pour a couple drops on the top every few prints or every, I don't know, eight hours of use probably. That seems to help quite a bit. You can find a deal on good bearings or just want to upgrade. I recommend the Nippon Denso. There we go. NB Japan, there's the model number. This is the square flange. They make a round and a two bolt. Any of them will work. The, uh, the length and the ID and the OD are really the dimensions that matter. So. Still a 20 millimeter bolt circle, which is what the factory flying bear LM10 LUU or whatever they are bearings are. So direct swap. <clears throat> so once you get Z done, I like to um, square the Y axis to the Z. 
And once you get the y-axis squared to the z, the x should fall right in line because that's just bracketed to the y. So <clears throat> Fine Bear has you mount this block. Sorry, right here. Let's go over here. This block 15 millimeters below the extrusion. So what I noticed, and it's not evident here because I fixed it, but let's go to the other side and I'll show you. Because if you mount it at 15 millimeters, the belt will flex right here. I don't know if you can see that. That makes an angle. It's not parallel to the top anymore. You can see it gets worse the closer I get to the bearing. And it gets better the further away we get. So if you mount those at 15 millimeter, you'll have the belt coming up at an angle. And it's no longer parallel or 90 degrees tangent to its roller. And what that does is introduce errors at the extreme ends of the print. So if you're printing big objects and you want to be accurate, this needs to be parallel, closer to the way I've done on this one, for example. You see as it comes up, it stays pretty much perfectly parallel. That one still goes up a little bit. I have some tuning to do, but you get the idea. So what I do is because, let's see, we take the drive side, side with the motor on it, and you set the height of the Y blocks here on the drive side, drive ends or on the rear side, so that this belt gives you no bend, just like that. And it ends up to be about 16 millimeters, I've noticed, from the top. So you want to do, again, this rear side, because we squared this frame. That's what we work off of, and that's where these blocks are mounted to. We don't necessarily care about this end yet. So once you have these two y-axis height sets so that your belt... Oh, this is terrible. You get the idea. So your belt doesn't bend up or down. What you're going to do is take your Harbor Freight Square. Put the head on the Y rail and make sure it's perfectly square to your extrusion by adjusting that end. You don't want to move this end because we just made it right. So adjust the the Y on that end, which would be the front when you're printing on it or using it, so that's perfectly square to this rear extrusion that we squared up in step one. So once you have both sides done, you do both sides, you know that your Y is perfectly 90 to your Z. And that anything you print as it goes down isn't going to kind of step away and slant because your Y is tilted up or down. And once you have these two rails set, you're then going to want to move the front Y drive shaft up or down again to get that perfectly parallel belt going into the roller or the gear there, sprocket, whatever you want to call it. So once you've done that, you've eliminated all the belting errors in the Y. It's perfectly square to Z. And as long as you've done that, because of the way the brackets work on Y to X, X will then be perfectly square. The other thing I've noticed is the way they have you attach the X belt to its carriage. Gives you the same issue with the belt, making an angle. Maybe we'll see a better over on this. Yeah, you can see it right there. It gets higher and higher and higher. So something I plan on doing is making a bracket that'll go onto the bottom of the extruder carriage here. And put the belt at the proper height on the carriage so that it doesn't make that angle. And that'll remove any x-axis belting errors. I think that's about it. Once you have three axes square, the only thing left is to level the bed, and the bed will take care of any errors in these angle brackets that the bed bolts to. Quick tip, if you haven't got a glass top, get a glass top. It's the best thing ever. Any questions, ask me in the comments. Enjoy, guys.